Hey guys, we're back once again to review another Friday movie, and big surprise here, it wasn't shit. This one. And this one actually has a bit of cool stuff here. Uh, well, for one, Mark got to meet the actor who played Jason yes, in this movie. Yes, um, I mentioned, I think, the last video that I was going to Horicon. I got to meet Tiffany Helm, who's in the fifth one as the girl who dances. Uh, she was very, very cool, super nice. Uh, I got a wicked poster you can bring up that uh, she signed for me. It's sort of like a Jason mask with her death scene in it. You can see grabbing her throat. And she signed it. I said I was sorry. I said I was sorry. It's great. I got to meet CJ Graham, who signed it right there in a cool blue pen. He plays Jason in this movie, and uh, it's pretty good. He was a rad dude. Like, he was such a nice guy while I was there. He did, like, a podcast thing. Uh, Invasion of the Remake is what it's called, so I'll give some plug to them. Uh, I'm in the one that Horicon actually asked questions to CJ Graham as well, which was his idea. He was like, you're a fan standing here, let's get you in on this. Jeremy will play it in here. He did a video to Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, this is CJ Graham, Jason, Friday the 13th, Part 6. Having a good time. Just want to show you some of the fans, some of the artwork you're missing. Too bad, too square, wouldn't want to be ya. We're having a good time you without come. you. Told you to come. But if you're working, good job. Staying home. If you're just doing nothing because you're lazy, he's doing nothing. He starts you missed Tuesday just it. You missed out. Talk to you later, buddy. That was pretty nice of him to do that. Like, the, like totally think it's going to be a... Uh, like he's like, oh, you're not here. And he's like, well, if you're working, though. Yes, he's, I was he's like, like wow. so sorry, too bad. But if you're working, that's cool. Like, it's great. I was like, wow, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> he's a really good guy. Uh, super big dude, too. Like, he's huge. Although still only the third biggest Jason behind Tim White and uh, Ken Kurzinger, who plays him in the Freddy vs. Jason. He's the biggest one. But uh, this movie is Jason Lives, Friday the 13th, Part 6. Has a lot of firsts for the series. Uh, it's the first in the series where Jason is the first Undead. word in the title. Oh, that. Yeah. First word in the title, which becomes a thing with uh, Jason Takes Manhattan, Jason X, Jason Goes to Hell. Like, it kind of becomes a thing. I mean, later it's actually a rights thing, but we'll talk about that in later movies. This one's directed by Tom McLaughlin, who looks like an old rocker and did a lot of TV movies, which is unfortunate. Because he it's... actually does a pretty good job with this one. This is probably my favorite one now. <laughs> because it actually has pacing. Before we get into more of the first, uh, it stars Tom Matthews, the third actor to play the Tommy Jarvis character. Tony Goldman, uh, who's okay. like the dude who gets dragged to Hell and Ghost. He's also um, what one of the best mean? parts from uh, the sixth, sixth, day. Day, the sixth day. The Schwarzenegger movie where he's the villain in the sixth day. If you really believe that, then you should clone yourself while he's still alive. And why's that? So I can understand your unique perspective. No. So you can go fuck yourself. And uh, it's his first movie ever. He's like in a tiny little scene with uh, the director's wife. Like two minutes. And uh, it's, it's got a funny death. It's a funny little death. It's one of those. Yeah, the deaths are either very good or they're very funny. Yeah. Like every one pretty much is a good death. They actually got the gore back that was severely yeah, missing from the last yeah. one. There ain't no titty shots yeah. in this one. That's one of the first. There is no nudity in this movie at all, which is hilarious because four had a bunch of nudity. Five was damn near softcore porn. Actually, I feel it works it really well because... You don't miss it. No, because um, they're fucking killing in this movie. There's yeah. actual story. And I mean, they still did the same thing where like they kind of had rules about how often characters should die. They did go back and do reshoots and kill some characters. Just to um, kill off. Just to like add more deaths to it. Like there's uh, three characters. Like one of them's the caretaker for yeah, the... Uh, just gets the bottle. It, which is a great... Jason just slams the bottle. Yeah, him, that was a great Which death. is almost unfortunate. And I'm kind of glad they didn't do this because who knows what it would have done to the series. But the original ending... Uh, the caretaker lives, and he's like, we go back to the cemetery at the end in Tom McLaughlin's, like, original movie, and uh, we meet Jason's dad, which, which is, like, never mentioned in the series ever. It's in the novelization, not that anyone fucking read that, and whatever <laughs> the hell that was. But, uh, yeah, it's there, and that's kind of cool, and it would have been interesting, but... I mean, they would have just ignored it because the seventh movie is yeah. garbage anyway. But this movie actually has a really good pacing. It has a good story in terms of 
Tommy just really wants to make sure that Jason's dead once and for all. He, in fact, accidentally, though accidentally, breaks him back by <laughs> kill, stabbing his corpse with this metal <laughs> rod, which then is struck by lightning, which is better than any of the reasons how of how Freddy came back in any of the fry. Uh, I don't know, man. The fry, uh, a dog pissed movies. Freddy back to life, like a dog. That was so stupid. Right off the bat, though, there's already good deaths with this character. Like, there's the really first death. We got a freaking like Kano heart punch like right yeah. through the body, and it's like there. And oh, and there's a lot of like he snaps a dude in half. Um, yeah. He. That's a great death. Like he, he slams a head into uh, into the, a wall the so hard. Wall yeah, that. that her face is imprinted, kind of like a, a a little slight homage to the whole uh, rubber face. From yeah, the it's first that kind of which is, There's a lot of homages in this. Like every single street corner is yeah, an homage. They're to like someone Carpenter, um, Cunningham Street, uh, Karloff. It's made with you a little bit of love. Yeah, you it's can tell that nice. he's a paying homage as well as setting his own little standard here. There's actual children in this film. Unfortunately, none of them are kids. Yeah, they're but, <laughs> but there's kids at the camp. It's the first movie where there's kids at the camp. Um, I think there might be some in some flashbacks at some point. Uh, maybe later or earlier. I don't remember. These movies kind of blend. But it is the first movie that has like kids in the actual timeline. Yeah. And there's great humor too. Like at one point, <laughs> there's this guy who's trying his best to look like Johnny Depp from Fro Crop from, Top. Yeah, Crop Top, and they're having sex in this. <laughs> in this RV, and the power goes out at one point. Because well, yeah, yeah. So he goes, she says he's not allowed to come until the song's over, and, and song she's like, it's ten minutes, and he's like, oh god, which that's an and, unreasonable and, expectation. And but then the power gets Jason pulled out. Jason pulls the power, and as soon as the power goes out, he's like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they got the car flip, and then he yeah. stands on top of it, and it's on fire. That was a dope shot. There's, it's got cool shots. Jason, I like CJ Graham the way the dude moves. He gets the yeah. Jason thing. He's not quite it's like robot. The Deadliest gardener, because he's got the gardener <laughs> outfit in this one for some reason. Like really obvious gardener dwells at the end of the movie. It's it's cool. It's also Jason's like legitimately a zombie now. Like mm -hmm. we're beyond. I mean, bang, 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 he's like a supernatural up. being in this. He's like as we talked about in the first four. He keeps not dying. <laughs> Yeah, Stupidly, somehow like, even though he was gets human. Like, axe in the head. Like, he gets oh, like the axe in the one, shoulder. Like, he, gets, like, he gets like a giant freaking like. That's cut. just gone. 22 he, he, hours yeah, later. Yeah, he healed <laughs> that, just brushed that off. You think so, of, even when you're thinking of the first couple movies, yeah, that he's like an unstoppable when, Yeah, the when he's like, yeah, he's still actually alive. Like, what? But then also there's kind of talking about the things that are set in Freddy vs. Jason that are not apparent here, like his fear of water. Jason full on walks into water. Maybe no this is the movie that this makes one. him afraid of water. Maybe. Uh, well, he drowns at the end of this movie. And he gets cut up by a boat propeller. Yeah, a boat propeller. And he's still alive at the end of this movie, but he's a zombie, so yeah. who gives a shit? So, oh. uh, just on the drowning thing, I mentioned this in the interview I did, the podcast thing, but it's a really cool story. Uh, in Minnesota, someone made a statue in the lake yes. of Jason drowning. He didn't tell anybody. So like divers would go down and see like Jason drown in this lake, and I was like, that's super cool. It's a good movie. It's got a good soundtrack. Got some Alice yeah. Cooper songs that he made. Specifically yeah, specific for, three for this songs movie. that he made. For Maybe the movie, gave the idea of is, Dream Warriors. Well, Dream Warriors. Um, Queen did it with Highlander. Like that yeah. kind of became the thing with yeah, these movies in the, in the '80s, where like they were getting rockers to make original music for these movies. And it's super cool. I mean, it's not a great song, but it's catchy. Yeah. No, no, it's a good time. It's definitely probably the most enjoyable one in terms of pacing. There is something that's happening. Like, it, well, there were some really cool deaths in the first 30 minutes. Like, wow, how are they going to keep up with this? And they actually do. They the, the story like is good enough, too. And, like, we got, like... Almost a relationship. Yeah, there's, the like, a little bit of a thing on. And, the fucking and, eyes. Fuck, totally. And, you know what? I stand by she's the reason we don't miss the nudity. Because she's sexy throughout this whole yeah, movie. Yeah, she just looks like... Oh, wait. We forgot one thing. Um, the caretaker, when he has that joke about... Like, who would want to, like, bring Jason yeah. back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a great moment where he's looking, he's he's filling in the grave, and he was like, who would want to dig up Jason? And then he looks right at the camera, and fourth wall breaks. He's like, some people have a messed up idea of entertainment. <laughs> and it's like, ah, it's on so the, good. On the nail on the head. Yeah. Just, and it's unfortunate, too, because this guy does a really good job. The director does a good job, but he didn't really do uh, much in terms of TV like movies after Everything TV after this. Which is really strange. But otherwise, I enjoyed it. It's definitely my favorite one out of all of them. I like the Corey Feldman one was alright, but it did drag. This one doesn't drag. It's got even a car chase in it at one point for no real reason. <laughs> it's just there. So and up close through the jeans crotch shots. Yeah, that was that was weird. <laughs> 
But otherwise, I enjoyed this one. It's definitely my favorite one so far. But in terms of rating, what would you give it? I um, I don't know. I think, I mean, I'm probably still around a four. Yeah, same. Like, I just can't go higher than no, that for these I don't movies. think these movies are ever going to go higher. The only one that might get into a five I'm giving Jason. Is... I'm giving Freddy vs. Jason a seven. You just need to accept that from now. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling that one's going to get a higher rating for me. But, yeah, definitely this is a four for me as well. It's an enjoyable film. It's, it's fun. It's great. Yeah. Um, it kind of hits. It's, again, like I said before, this is what Jason is. Like, five mm -hmm. was a weird anomaly. This is what everyone knows him as now, basically. It's, yeah, the, like four, six. The camp is what the video Seven to was. a degree, and then, like, eight's kind of a travesty, but we're so steeped in Jason by the time we get there that we kind of, you just go along with it. When people think of Jason, you look at the video game, Four and six are the two most, the biggest inspiration for the video game. Mm -hmm. um, the good video game, not the NES one. And not that it's great either, <laughs> but it's buggy as fuck, but it's fun. Um, this is this is Jason. Like, four and six for me. I like uh, Jason Goes to Hell as well. And Well, this will be interesting to but see. it's still, these, these two are the Jason movies. And I think I mentioned that six was good early on in this, and I stand by that. And now um, we maybe have like we'll have an all right time with seven. I think seven's and, all right. It's, and, it gets a little weird. There's like psychic shit, but kind of like I don't remember which nightmare it was, but where we're like we just kind of bought a bunch of supernatural stuff, and you were like, should we? And it's like we're in a world where like a dude kills people in their nightmares. So you yeah, just kinda, that's it's true. It's in the same boat. It's the same kind of thing. Like Jason's already supernatural now. So by seven, when we get psychic shit and telekinesis, it's basically Carrie. Like the seventh movie is Carrie versus Jason. So ah, uh, that would be interesting. It's all right. It's not done as good as you'd hope with. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> that's all from us. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll be getting onto the seventh one as soon as ish as we can. Maybe because now that's seven, eight, nine, ten remake. And then six more times we gotta five more times we gotta deal with Jason before we even get to, to Freddy versus, Freddy versus Jason. Jason. And then this whole trip will be done. And then we'll oh. probably start on Halloween. <laughs> Anyways, that's all from us. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys next time. He's the man behind.